welcome you to the Purple Friday podcast. Uh, this is our fourth edition, so we're excited for this one to sit down with head football coach Brad Laird, who is uh, honestly just a rock star here on campus uh, and my favorite neighbor. Uh, we live in the same subdivision. Um, not saying anything about the other two. He's across the street, but definitely, definitely in the top three. Well, coach. I was about to say he doesn't know any more of the neighbors, so <laughs> the only one he does know is me. But more disappointing is you said I'm the fourth episode? Yeah, fourth. Pretty disappointed, not why, the first. Why weren't you the first? Oh, we can go ahead. Yeah, yeah well, oh, okay. I, I didn't want to, you know, you were doing camp, and, you know, it's you're, you're a busy guy right now. I mean, it's heading to football. That's why you weren't excuses, the first. Excuses, excuses. Yeah. Well, so, so let's talk about, let's just jump right in and talk football. How excited are you for a somewhat normal year? I mean, after last year's COVID season, it was obviously complications and things like that. So how – how much are you looking forward to really getting back to a little normal football this, this fall? Well, I mean, I, th- I think more so than, you know, first, so thank you for having me on. Yeah. Uh, you know, for when, when you look at an 18 to 22-year-old student, student mm-hmm. athlete, uh, that's, that's had to endure what they've had to endure, you know, some coming into their freshman year uh, in, in this situation with COVID, others that were uh, here at Northwestern already, you know, for them to, to be able to get back to – as much normalcy as we can, and uh, I mean, it, if if you were 18 and they asked you to wear a mask, and and, and you know, so much that they had to learn, uh, you know, now as we continue to move forward, coming out of the spring season, which was uh, you know totally different uh, in itself, um, you know, to have all sports uh, played in the spring, um, to fast forward to where you know now in the fall you got football, you got volleyball, you got soccer. You know, you got your fall sports that are that are that are starting. So we're excited. I mean, it's uh, you couldn't ask for uh, you know uh, coming into uh, the 2021 season, mm-hmm. September 18th, first home game, uh, first two games on the road to to be able to see. You know, as we look behind us, uh, you know, there's nothing like Turpin Stadium to see the fans, the community, uh, the students, and their involvement and the impact that they have on these student athletes. I don't know if they quite understand. Mm-hmm. The impact, the positive impact that they have on the student athletes. So we're excited about that. Yeah, I'm pumped, and, and you said it right. Like it's awesome just to look behind us and see. Like, man, this will be full pretty soon. Yeah, you know, it's it's right upon us. It is. I mean, it's. I mean, you know, you look at September 4th mm-hmm. uh, being in Denton, Texas at 6:30 kickoff. So, uh, you know, we're excited about that opportunity and look forward to see what this season has. Yeah. So you mentioned something a second ago, but just about the student support, community support, things like that. I've always been in awe of who you are in terms of uh, being such a great um, ambassador for not only football, but Northwestern. So I saw some things on social media recently. I saw, let's see, you, you went to a Spirit of Northwestern practice where you were checking out the band, which is super important. And I saw you recently, you went to a sorority meeting. I did. And so, so tell me, like, what, what are you doing at these things? Are, are you garnering support? Is, is, is that the, the main mission? Well, yeah, but I'll I tell you, I mean, North. Natchitoches does not exist without Northwestern State. Northwestern 100%. State does not exist without Natchitoches. And when you look at the university, we don't exist without each other. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and there's so many, whether it's band, whether it's sorority, whether it's biology major, the, the work that they put in to be successful in what they do. And, you know, I just I love going around to be able to, to, to see kind of, you know, not only for the – encouragement for what they do, the support that they have, but also kind of see what they do. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, I re, sure not, I'm not sure what it's called, the band notes, and they're going to laugh at me, but, I mean, I looked at something that just looked totally, a bunch of numbers that I could not read. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I, you know, when you look at that and you're, you know, wow, you, mm-hmm. you, you, you put it in a football perspective of, wow, these guys offensively, defensively, and special teams got to learn so much. Guess what? Yeah. Sororities do uh, a band. I mean, you know, so you look at all aspects of campus, and plus, you know, I was here in Natchitoches, kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, you know, my dad was the offensive coordinator here at that time, and so I had the opportunity at a young age to to see what Northwestern State's about, and had the opportunity to come back to school, uh, and so you know, it's provided me so much, and the least I can do is give back, uh, not only to the university but to the community. Yeah. And I, I just I laughed when I saw your uh, at band practice in the sorority picture. I was like, that's quintessential Coach Laird right there, man. <laughs> I tell you, walking up, 
you know, walking up to be able to see all. Oh, the high rise in the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not a fan of heights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I've been up there, and that thing's. I don't know, man. That thing's been there for a while. I don't know if I trust it, but no, it's 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 awesome. And you know, my favorite part too is incorporating the band in the games. I mean, they're they're there cheering you guys on every second. They're hilarious. I mean, they, they say some of the funniest things at games, so I'm, cl- I'm glad you're supporting the band. I think that's super important yeah, from an athletic standpoint. I mean, you can't, you can't beat what they do. Nah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, especially, I mean, to me, one, one of the best bands in the state of Louisiana. Yeah, it's the, the biggest, it's the biggest band, the biggest. too. Yeah. But, you know, we had them come out to practice last spring. And, uh, man, play away. You know, they, they get, um, you know, they're able to be in their spots mm-hmm. where they would be on a Saturday night. For us, it's noise. We're going to have noise during the game, so it's a win-win for both of yeah. us. So, it's uh, man, th- they've always been great and been, been supportive of us. Yeah. Well, so we talked a little bit about the, the, the unlikely spring season we had um, last season. So now, because of COVID and different things, now you have some six year seniors on the team like Gavin and Kendrick. You know, what how are you using utilizing that leadership of those guys? Uh, how does that look differently? Because for them, I'm sure they're just excited for a normal season too. But what does it look like for them and they're playing in their sixth season? It's it's been um. You know, the opportunity that the NCAA presented them. Uh, at the time, you know, you, you rewind a year ago, probably pretty close to this day, when, when they found out that their season was going to be postponed, not knowing what the season would look like, but also not knowing what their career would look right. like, you know. And then the NCAA gives them and grants them the opportunity to, to have, a, I guess you could say, a COVID waiver. You know, so for those guys to be able to experience – uh, a normal summer, mm-hmm. uh, a normal fall camp, uh, to be able to do something that a lot of them, when you talk about a Gavin Landry, mm-hmm. uh, you talk about a Kendrick Price, you know, something that, that those guys have been doing since seven, eight years old. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that that's what they know. And so to be able to go out uh, in a season that's going to be normal and have the opportunity uh, to, to compete for Northwestern State mm-hmm. one more time, you, I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. And, and they've been great. You know, they, uh, you know, having those guys here in the spring and being able to compete against somebody else and then turn around uh, and, and have that same opportunity in the fall, you, you've got those leaders that, um, that really showed who they were in the spring and have carried that over into the fall. Yep. I see it all over social media. And, you know, Gavin's all on the social media oh, yeah. and uh, all over Instagram. And, you know, he's a local legend back in White Castle, basically. I, we were at a college fair recently, and they were like, you know Gavin Landry? And they're like, yes, 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 we know Gavin. So it's cool to see him because I, I think he's been so positive and um, Kendrick and all the other leaders. I mean, everyone's been so positive about going from a weird spring season now to the fall. And I feel like there's just so much momentum in the air, uh, which is it seems like, uh, I honestly, for someone like me, a huge Demon fan, I can't wait for the fall because of those things. Yeah, and, and I think, Van, you see, and, and you take, you know, on campus, I mean, what was taken away from us. Yeah. You know, the, the just having students on campus, you know, not just the student athletes, but students on campus. And when something gets taken away, you realize how much you love it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we, we all have seen. But these guys uh, that, that, that are, have chosen to come mm-hmm. back really have, have seen, you know, at any point it can get taken away. And you talk about those two, uh, a Kendrick Price and a Gavin Landry, yeah. who both overcame uh, knee injuries sure. that, that missed time. And so, you know, for them, they, they understand that, um, you know, when you do something you love, at some point that may get taken away. So take advantage of it while you got it. Hundred um, percent. So you you mentioned um, you were here K through five. You know, growing up here while your dad was a coach, and your dad's a prolific coach in just Louisiana history. At at what point, you know, you were a record holder here, playing quarterback for us and all that. At what point did you know you were going to be a coach? Like that's that was your career. That's what you wanted to focus on. When when was that for you? Yeah, I, would, I, I wanted to learn, learn about you. That's that's what this is about. Uh, I wasn't going to be a coach. Um, you know, of course, grew up around it. My sure. dad, uh, before he passed, was forty plus years of what, you know, high school coaching, college coaching, yeah. and so as a little runt running out here uh, behind us with the likes of Joe Delaney. I know uh, everybody's heard of Joe Delaney and Bobby A. Bear went on to be quarterback for the Saints. Mark Duper. Um, you know, for the Miami Dolphins. But anyway, so those those players were here on this field. So I was always around it, but as I got the opportunity to come back to Northwestern State, and I want to thank Sam Goodwin. Mm-hmm. You know, Sam Goodwin was the only one that gave me the opportunity to be able to play college football. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, you know, 
know, you look at, at that particular time, I don't think you realize how lucky I was. Mm-hmm. But now as I look back, the opportunity that he gave me introduced me to so many opportunities to be able to sit here. And so, but when I first came to college, I was not going to be um, a coach. I saw my, my dad did it. Uh, what was your major? I was gonna be yeah, I was gonna be a physical therapist. Okay, I can see that. And uh, after that first semester, I realized some of those classes that I had to take, and it wasn't quite for me. Yeah. And uh, so, not long after that, did I decide, well, I better just go be an old coach. And uh, I've kind of see it growing up, and, and 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 you know, my dad, I think his impact on mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna say student athletes, but his impact on uh, young men. And women, because he was an athletic director. Uh, you, you saw the influence that, that we can have mm-hmm. on, on individuals' lives. And I think that's why we do what we do is because, you know, not the X's and O's. I mean, sure. uh, you know, there, there's a lot of X's and O coaches out there, but it's the, uh, the impact that, you, that you're able to have on their life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not just while they're here, but, but, but also when they leave. Mm-hmm. That, you know, when they leave here, they're going to be a better person and they're going to represent Northwestern State in a positive way. Well, so. And honestly, that's this is the fourth podcast. Um, sorry, your fourth, but again. Still, um, don't whatever. agree with that. But yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. But, you know, it's that's been the underlying theme as we've talked to um, everyone at Northwestern. It's Everyone's here in higher ed, whether it's for athletics or whether it's for, like, Dr. Handel, the provost. It's You're here for the students. And I think that's ultimately um, what everyone should really – understand about their career opportunities here like we're here to support them we're here because of them and if we're not doing the due diligence and and the justice behind that of making them into better humans then why are we here so that's awesome that even in athletics that it bleeds over in that capacity well let's let's just be honest if there's not uh student athletes or there's not football players i don't have this job that i have you know and 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 the same can be said with with those that are in i say education but uh, that deal with uh Students, sure. you know, we're we're so fortunate to have them because we're able to do the things that we do. And yeah. So, it's uh, you know, it, it's it's we impact them, but they also impact us. Right. You know, we, we're able to to take young men as as they've come here and and watch them develop. And I, I'm gonna tell you that does so much for coaches, and coaches are able to see that from those student athletes as right. well. Now, so you were, like I said earlier, you hold some records as a quarterback here, and uh, you're just awesome in your own right. Then you jumped and you you were defensive coordinator. By the for way, us. by the by the way, I want to go back because this is a true yeah. story. Okay, I can't wait. Every quarterback got hurt, <laughs> and I had no. They had to play me. This is a, this is a true story. So I'm I'm a freshman here at Northwestern <laughs> State, and when I got here, I don't know. There's seven or eight quarterbacks, and I'm yeah. five feet nothing, a hundred nothing, and can't throw it from here to that yeah. wall. And uh, and so literally, I mean, I, I'm like, what am I doing? I mean, what was <laughs> Coach Goodwin thinking? Yeah. And, uh, so as we go through the year, you see one drop off, you see one quit. I'm on scout team. I'm trying to go home every weekend. Don't, I mean, it's I didn't like the smell of Natchitoches. I mean, you name it. I mean, I, I just it was like that what? plant. The plant was yeah, too close, oh you know. Yeah. And so, with four games left, excuse me, with five games left, uh, they're uh, they're on the road. I didn't even travel. Right. And they had to finish the game with Brad Brown. I'll never forget Brad Brown. Uh, was a quarterback in high school, mm-hmm. converted running back. All, the, the other two quarterbacks, I think, that were healthy going into whoever that was mm-hmm. uh, with five games left got hurt, so they had to play the running back right. at quarterback to finish the game. So on Sunday, uh, Sam Goodwin, I don't, I don't think we had cell phones in, so I'm not sure how he got a hold of me, but he wanted me to come to his office. He sent a fax or something. Yeah, I'm not that old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, hey, of course, I don't know exactly how it went, but, I mean, there's literally no quarterback. He said, do you want to play the last four games and lose your red shirt year? So, basically, I would lose a whole year to, to play in four games. I said, well, heck, yeah, I want to play. I mean, didn't know what I was getting into. Yeah. Um, but, literally, every quarterback got hurt. So, we go to uh, – it was Southwest, Southwest Texas State at the time. Now it's Texas State. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, I'm talking about pregame. I, I was – I don't think I've thrown at anybody in pregame. I mean, did, there were, did not have an incomplete pass. Um, but fast forward to the first quarter, I threw three interceptions in the first quarter. That was the longest bus ride home. I think the only one that talked to me after my game, after the game was my dad. But the good thing about it was, you know, you take away that first quarter, it can only get better, right? right. When you throw three interceptions yeah. in the first I don't think anybody's done that. I mean, I, I don't care what level. Right. Uh, and, 
And so it could only get better from there. But literally, that's how I got my start at, uh, at Northwestern. So. God, I love that. That's such a good story, Zach. What, what, what do you think about that? No, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's funny. Then the next year I broke my collarbone, so I lost my year anyway. Yeah, well, so there you go. See, in the out. grand scheme of things, it worked out. So so you went from quarterback to, uh, I mean, you've been de- defensive coordinator for us, I think, three times, right? right? Yeah. So how do you make the transition from just an offensive-minded position to defensive coordinator in, I mean, known for a purple swarm defense, you know, back in, what is it, the, I guess the 90s, 2000s? So yeah, early 2000s. Yeah, or early back, 2000s. So, so, yeah. so how do you make that jump from offense to a defensive coordinator? Yeah, what in the hell was that coach thinking? Yeah. Me as a defensive that's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking. So tell me about There's got to be a story there, too. There right? is, yeah. I'm in Nashville, Arkansas. Uh-huh. You ever heard of Nashville, Arkansas? Uh, no. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So when my dad told me he was going to go uh, take a job at Nash- in Nashville, I'm thinking, man, Nashville, Tennessee, man, I get to go visit him. <laughs> He's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. But then he says, Nashville, Arkansas. Never heard of it. <laughs> Um, so it's in the southwest part of Arkansas, and I actually, I guess year six or seven, I was coaching. He was the head coach there. I had coached at Washita High School. I had coached at West Monroe High School uh, here in Louisiana. I had coached at Longview, Texas. So I said, man, how cool would it be to coach with my dad? And uh, so he was the head coach athletic director at, at Nashville High School. It was a small 2A school. So I was there two seasons. Uh, Unbelievable program uh, in 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 all aspects, mm-hmm. but it's a it's a March. It was in February or March, and uh, and so I got back to to the office. I'd gone for a little run. Got back to the office where my dad had left me a note on my desk. Again, I don't think I had cell phones back then, but it said call Scott Stokely. No big deal. Scott was here at Northwestern mm-hmm. uh, as a great quarterback uh, prior to uh, me being here. Went on to be a great coach here at Northwestern. And, uh, and at the time, he was the head coach here at Northwestern State. And so I called him back. He said, hey, I want you to uh, come down and talk to me about defense coordinator. I said, coach, I said, you know me pretty well. I said, I've, first of all, I've played quarterback. Uh, I've never played a snap on defense. I've never coached a down on defense. So say that again. You want me to come be the defense coordinator? And Scott was one of those that, you know, that's, that, that was the path that he took. Mm-hmm. Um, and I owe so much to him in this profession for giving me that opportunity to come back to Northwestern State because defensively I learned everything from him. He said, look, just I, I'm going to teach you everything. You go teach it to the, to the players. And, and that's kind of how I, that, that opportunity came about. And, uh, and as I was driving up, right before I had an old black, uh, I think it was, black Ford or black Chevy, and, and I'm pulling up, and by the time, right before I got to that the circle drive, the light came on and it shut off. Uh, so, luckily I made it to Natchitoches, but that was the end of that vehicle uh, at the time. So, that's my first uh, impression of coming back to Northwestern <laughs> State as a coach was my, my truck shut down about the time I got here. Yeah, which was an omen, basically saying you're destined Not to be leave. here. Yeah. yeah, can't leave. If, so if, if you weren't, you know, naturally gifted at quarterback and all this, you know, what position? So oh, I wouldn't be. I couldn't play. There's nothing else I could play. <laughs> really? Uh-uh. Couldn't do it. Not fast enough, tall enough. I got good enough hands to be a receiver. Um, not fast enough, strong enough to play defensive back uh, or linebacker or anything. So yeah. really couldn't do anything. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I never played anything. Well, I, I'd have tried basketball. Basketball was my first love. Really? Oh, yeah. I tried to, uh, I tried to quit football my ninth grade year going into my ninth grade year to just play basketball really yeah and I couldn't shoot well that's that's, that's my next question you know I, where I, where was the talent level yeah, for basketball yeah it wasn't I mean I could I could make free throws I had 21 yes. points one game but I was 19 to 21 from the free throw line yeah no yeah and and then I made one layup I think they let me a layup that was my 21 mm-hmm. points but um Scott a guy by the name of Scotty Thurman probably people don't know Scotty Thurman played for the University of Arkansas when they won the national championship back in 1994. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Scotty, me and Scotty Thurman went to high school together, and so he was a sophomore when I was a senior, so we were able to – so, you know, I thought I was just going to – me and him were going to dial it up basketball-wise, and that was going to be it. But um, luckily, what, you know, I'm going to go back to what I talked about previously. Mm-hmm. You know, those coaches – right. Um, that impact people. I had a coach at that particular time, and it was not my father, that, that reached out to me and, and just talked to me, didn't force me to do anything. And, and so I ended up, you know, rethinking 
uh, my decision. And next thing you know, I'm back playing. And uh, I hate to, I'm not going to say the rest is history, but opportunity presented itself uh, in football mm-hmm. that, you know, if those weren't there, I don't think I'd have these opportunities to be where I am yeah, today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, so. it's destiny, man. Yeah. Well, so as head football coach now, um, you're approaching – Fourth, fourth yeah. year, fourth season. Um, what what keeps you up at night? You know, I asked the same question to, to Dr. Hondel yeah. and to Dr. Lyles. You know, what keeps you up at night in this position? Well, I mean, I think you're so you, – you want the best for the student athlete. And, and, again, that's not just the X and O's. Yes, you want – we want to win every game. We want to win sure. championships. Um, but you just want to give them the opportunity daily to be successful. Mm-hmm. And, and I think each day you're – you and, and I tell you, I've got a great staff, mm-hmm. and uh, the, I tell you, they uh, they work extremely hard for these student athletes, and and so that that makes it so much easier mm-hmm. as far as my job. But you know, you just want the opportunity for these student athletes to be successful each day, mm-hmm. and, and again, that's both on and off the field. So you're constantly, what can we do to give them that opportunity to be successful? Right, and so you mentioned your um, your assistant uh, coaches, your staff. Uh, don't like four of them have ties to Louisiana Southern Conference? I mean, this is a staff that's kind of tied to whether it's Louisiana or what have you. And honestly, I've known some of them over the years, and man, they're amazing. So, can you talk a little bit about your staff and some of those ties? That yeah, man. Here? I think you know we're going through a situation right now where we just hired four. Yeah. Um, you know, when I got hired in 2018, we've had the same staff. Um, which is, you know, in this day and age, yeah, you don't see a lot. Right. Uh, but you look at, uh, you know, going through the spring season and going through the summer uh, and losing four coaches uh, and then, you know, being able to hire, uh, you know, to replace them. But but it starts with, with Brad Smiley, mm-hmm. offense coordinator, who me and him go back to 1996, uh, actually shared an office here at Northwestern really? State. Um, he was actually an offensive GA. I was a defensive mm-hmm. GA. Um and so, you know, our ties uh, come back all the way to Northwestern State. Mike Lucas is mm-hmm. our defense coordinator. I think our ties somewhat go back to when I played. Mm-hmm. As I was a quarterback, he was at Sam Houston as a defense coordinator. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, – and then he went on to be- become head coach at, uh, at Southeastern. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but you know, you look at those two and, and the success that they've had in this sure. profession and, and the impact that they've had on – um, on these young people's lives, and but you know, offensively with uh, with Coach Smiley, Coach Jay Pond, uh, who coaches our offensive line, that um, you know had ties with uh, Coach Smiley yeah. at Trinity Valley. Um, uh, Coach Fitzgerald, uh, he's one of the new coaches uh, that that we hired. Uh, he's got ties to the Southern Conference, um, ha- has has ties to Scott Stoker. You know, so you know, in this profession, it's mm-hmm. You know, who have you been around sure. and, and uh, the importance of the relationships. Uh, he coaches our quarterbacks. And then Rashad Jackson uh, is our special teams coordinator and coaches our receivers. Right. Um, and then defensively, we talked about Coach Mike Lucas. And then mm-hmm. Devon Lockett, who's our assistant head coach, that, um, you know, his story is, is awesome. I feel like he's been here forever. Yeah, and he had, you know, a player here yeah. like myself. Um, you know, but, but his path to get to where he was as a player yeah. – was uh, it's it's a great story, and then uh, you know his uh, his ties to me uh, in this profession here at Northwestern State. Uh, Josh Jones yeah. uh, is um, coaches our safeties. Uh, Josh was at UCA at one point, Central Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, that was with, uh, within this conference. Sure. Uh, won, he was there three years. Uh, one year they won the conference championship, uh, and then uh, Kevon Beckwith, who's uh, we we brought him back to Louisiana. He's from New Orleans. And he coaches our defensive line. And, uh, Jalen Rhodes coaches our running backs. And then Dion Cooper, uh, he helps with uh, Coach Lucas with the linebackers. But, you know, the thing about the staff, you know, it's not as much you look at in my position as far as them knowing X's and O's, right. knowing football. They know football. It's the impact that they have. And I, I know I keep coming back to that because I think it's the most important mm-hmm. thing in this profession it is. is the impact that they have. I agree. Uh, on those student athletes. Yeah, and it seems like you really have a good family atmosphere going, which I think is most important. I try to build that same culture in our recruiting office. You know, if you're not dependent on one another and um, you're not there to have that person's back, I mean, that's not a good culture to be in. And 
you know, ultimately, I think that's what leads to success when you can depend on all the others around you. I think that's what you're doing. Yeah, and they, they you know, the, the family that they have sure. away from here. That's know, right. And, and to be able to bring that family here to, you know, because we talk about our football team as a family. Yeah. Well, you know, as I look at my family and, uh, you know, there's, you know, the highs and lows that we have. And, and as an 18-year-old daughter, to say every day has been perfect. Uh, for our relationship, That's what I, I have two. I have two daughters, so I'm. I'm hopeful, hopefully, it's going to be that, right? Perfect. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> my daughter was actually babysitted for your daughter. So That's right. That's I, right. You believed that everything was perfect, but no, I, I did. She was it, the best babysitter I ever. Oh, no, she's man. awesome. She's great. She's now a freshman at LSU. But you know, when you talk about fan, and I also got a son. Uh, I'd be remiss not to mention him. He's 14 years old. Yeah. But as our coaches have sons and daughters that they have raised. And we talk to our team so much about family yeah. because, um, you know, families love each other. Right. They love each other through good and bad. And when you're a student athlete, uh, and in particular we're talking about football, you go through adversity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just like you do, just like we all do. We all do. Yeah. And those are the, the times where you got to stick together, and that's what families do. Yeah, so tell me about switching that, that coach hat to dad hat because, uh, let's see, from what I understand, you had a, a scrimmage recently, which – I caught it, which was awesome. Yeah. You guys had a great scrimmage, but you had to go to move-in day yeah, for yeah. your daughter. So how did yeah. how did that happen? Well, and how many things did you actually move here's you know, other than just posing for pictures on social media? Here's the problem with that is I was hoping by the time I got there, things would be moved in. They that, was, that, that was the time frame I was looking at. They hey, waited for you, didn't they? I, I have a scrimmage. I cannot miss the scrimmage, Good. but once that's over. And we actually had former players come back and cook for the team. And um, – so once me and Brock left, I said, you know, by the time we get there, things should be moved in. Well, we got there about 30 minutes after things were supposed to be moved, uh, moved in. Well, sure enough, we call, and it was just like perfect timing for us. They pulled up. We unloaded the stuff, took it up. So uh, I actually was there to, to, to haul all of it in. All right, we had some help. But, yeah, um, but yeah it, was, it was great because I didn't know uh, if I was going to be able to have that opportunity to, uh, to make that. So – we ended up going that Saturday, uh, that Saturday night. Got her moved in and and left that uh, left that Sunday. And you know, thinking that, okay, so we're leaving Sunday to come back, mm-hmm. which was the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Um, but thinking, wow, she's going to be by herself. You know, she's going to be. I mean, calling. You know, it was time to come home. Hadn't heard from her yet. Uh, so she's living. Uh, she's having the time of her life. Living the best life. We have yeah. heard. Yeah. We have heard from her. She, she's enjoying it, and that's what it's supposed to be about. That's, what that's awesome. It's supposed to be about. That's awesome. Well, um, so final question, you know, what what are you looking forward to the most in this fall season? You know, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, a particular, I don't know, uh, athlete you're looking to perform well or if you're looking forward to just fall normalcy. Like, what's the one thing you're looking forward to this fall that you can't wait for? Man, that's, that's a good question. You know, because there's so many things – go into a season that that you want to see I I think the main thing for us is I'm just I'm ready to be able to get on the bus September 3rd Mm -hmm. uh, that Friday at at noon and uh, and 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 be able to travel with the team to Denton Texas and and have the opportunity to showcase what the 2021 football team is going to be about you know because every season is has its own identity Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, you don't know until you get in those situations exactly what the identity of this yeah. football team is going to be. So I think just excited to kind of to see what uh, what this team's about. They've done everything we've asked them to do. Uh, they they come to work each and every day amongst the things that could take them away from. Sure. You know, we talk about COVID. Uh, you know, we talk about society. You know, and and we've talked about that a lot. And uh, and there's so many outside factors that can take them away from what they have to do to be successful, I admire them so much because they haven't let that. Sure. They've uh, they focused on the things that they can control and do the things that they can do each and every day to be the best that, that they can be, and that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. Awesome. Well, man, I can't wait to see them uh, start the season off and the home opener pretty soon. I know for everyone watching out there, too, there's still season tickets available. You can call Mike Jakelich, uh, 318-357-4268, or email him, uh, however he spells Jakelich because that's hard to, hard to spell. <laughs> Um, but definitely go to nsudemons.com, check those out. You know, students obviously get in free for the games, all the students that are watching, but uh, there's parents tickets too and everything else for community members because ultimately, you're right, Northwestern doesn't exist without Natchitoches, Natchitoches doesn't exist without Northwestern, so we hope we have that support upcoming this year. And you guys are doing awesome, and 
Uh, Coach, thanks so much for sitting down today. Um, I truly admire what you're doing, what all your staff's doing. You guys are doing such a great job, and I hope you feel supported from us because uh, we truly love what you're doing. Well, we appreciate uh, everything that y'all do. Y'all, y'all do so much for, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to speak on behalf of Northwestern mm-hmm. State football, but uh, but also for this university, and we, we appreciate it. I will let the – I do apologize that, that I was fourth and not first, so we will get that straight uh, as we get to the next go around because uh, I, I won't let that leave me. But I do appreciate everything. You were the first coach that we sat uh, down that's with. Not, that's not oh, – I can't win. Spin it can't in another win, direction. I'm it's not, not ready. It's not good enough for yeah. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There will be more of these coming out uh, every other week or so, so make sure to follow us because Purple Friday podcasts are pretty awesome. As always, Fork and Demons.